Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, for those of you who don't remember, recently I bought the cheapest proper electric car on Auto Trader, a lovely pearlescent white Nissan Leaf. It's a bit rough around the edges, but it's also quite lovely, I think. I've been running it for a while now and it's been fantastic. And I've been wanting to bring you one piece of content in particular for a while, and it is the range test. And today's the day I'm gonna deliver for you. I've seen the comments, I know you've been waiting too, but don't worry, it's happening right now. Now, I'm gonna do this a bit different today. I'm doing it vlog style because my lovely camera guys, they didn't wanna roll with me for ages doing a range test and I wanted to get this done ASAP. So here it is. We're gonna jump on board. I'm gonna shoot the whole thing on my trusty Apple iPhone 13 Pro Max. So if it's a bit rough around the edges, I apologize. We're going solo. Let's do it. Okay, so we're on board the mighty Leaf. Let's fire it up. It says key not detected. I think the battery in the key is dead, but there is actually a way around it. What you do is you put the key itself up against the start button, push it with the key. There, it started up now. I've got to get the battery replaced, but there you go. On the screen, it says I have 57 miles of range. Now remember that number, 57. That's what we're gonna try and achieve. If we get less than that, I'll be a little bit disappointed. I'm gonna reset the trip computer now and then set off. And we'll see what this bad boy can really do. Let's roll. One of the first things I wanna show you is that this car has two driving modes, which is important when you're trying to conserve range. It's got D and it's also got Eco. If I move this driving selector switch down into the drive position again, it goes into Eco and that gives me an estimated five mile bump, roughly. For the rest of this, I'm gonna to stick to eco and then hope I can eke out as much range as I possibly can. I've got a couple of options for the way that I do this range test. The first option is just to take it on a motorway and just hammer it at 70 miles an hour and see how quickly it runs down. But I think that would be very unfair because that's not how people drive this car, not at all. It's a city car, you know, people drive it in 30 mile an hour zones predominantly. So I'm gonna try and stick to this type of area and just go reasonably slowly in an environment where the Leaf was actually designed to be driven. Ooh, I don't know if you heard that, but it said in 200 yards, speed camera. So it's got like a built-in system for detecting speed cameras, which is ironic because when would you ever speed in a Nissan Leaf? You just wouldn't, would you? Okay, quick range update. I've done about four miles now, and the range is reading 59 miles, which is still pretty decent. Let's keep going. It's sort of guesswork, really. The car's trying to work out the range depending on a number of factors, including the way you drive, the temperature. It's what, about sort of 17 degrees today, um, and a whole host of other things. So it's detected that I'm driving very, very economically. So it's, it said, you know what, Rory's amazing. I'm gonna bump the range up by two miles, because it's him. Here's something that's interesting. The Leaf has a, a very clever, and I think it was the first car to ever do this, it's got a range bubble, so it shows you where you are on the sat-nav, and it also shows you where you can drive to and make it back to your starting point, and where you can drive to without making it back to your starting point. It's saying, I, I could probably drive to near Nottingham at the moment, which seems a bit ambitious, but there you go. <laughs> a nice little feature, it's actually really cool. I think a couple of other cars have adopted that. I've seen that in the Mini Electric, um, but just remember where that came from. It came from the mighty Nissan Leaf. Here's something else I find really fascinating, and I'm gonna pull in to demonstrate this, if I can find somewhere to stop. Uh, yeah, let's do a parallel park right here. Show off my parallel parking skills. Don't crash into anything. That looks like absolute perfection. I still got it, I really do still got it. Right, one question that I often get asked is how does aircon and heating affect the range in an electric car? Now I've done uh, about seven miles of driving so far. Um, and if I turn the aircon on, that drops, look at that, it drops by 10. 
It drops by 10 miles. It's gone down 10 miles just by using the heating. I'll turn up the fan. Now that doesn't really affect the, uh, the range too much and the temperature doesn't affect the range too much either. I find that difficult to believe, but that's what the car is saying. But yeah, you lose 10 miles of range by using the uh, heating or aircon in the Nissan Leaf. And that's in eco mode. If I go into normal drive mode and I turn the heating on and off, yeah, 14 miles of range lost in normal driving mode, which is very, very significant in a car with range as small as this. It's a good job that today is, uh, is pretty warm, so I'm not gonna need the heating or the aircon, to be honest with you, but yeah. In a car like this, you're gonna have to avoid using aircon or heating as much as possible if range is very important to you. Right, onwards. Okay, quick range update. I have done 14.7 uh, miles with 44 miles of range remaining, which is interesting because that adds up to 58 miles, which is pretty much what the car was suggesting it would get in the first place. So after a bit of fluctuation where it wasn't quite sure how many miles it was gonna get, it's sort of learned how I'm driving the car, what types of roads it's being driven on, and it's given me what seems like a fairly accurate so far estimation, or at least consistent estimation of um, how many miles it's gonna be able to drive. The obvious question though is, is 57, 58 miles a decent amount of range? Uh, it kind of depends on who you are and how you use your car. If you're just gonna drive it around in normal everyday situations, like, you know, drop the kids to school or whatever, I think it's probably fine because you can do 10, 15, 20 miles to school and then 20 back home and you still got loads to spare. If you want to drive a bit further, then obviously it's going to become a bit of an issue. Originally, the Nissan Leaf, according to Nissan's very ambitious estimations, shall we say, could do 124 miles. That's changed because obviously the battery has degraded over the years, which is another issue that electric cars have. But credit to Nissan, they've been very open about their battery degradation in the Leaf. On the right-hand side of the dash, you have a little gauge to show you how healthy the battery is. Um, and there are 12 bars in total. I've lost four of those bars, not me personally, but the car's lost four bars over the course of its lifetime. So it's lost about a third of its capacity, which is, I mean, it's quite significant, but as long as you're aware of what it's lost, then you can kind of recalibrate your expectations for the car's range. And actually losing 33% of battery capacity over nine years, is that such a bad thing? I think that's actually doing all right. Considering that even petrol cars, diesel cars, lose an awful lot in terms of performance uh, the longer they live, I think it's kind of to be expected really. And the range hasn't fallen off a cliff completely because originally there's no way a Nissan Leaf could do 124 miles. You'd be lucky if it did sort of 90 from memory when I used to drive these back in the day. So this is interesting. In front of me, there's a Hyundai Ioniq 5, which is one of my favorite electric cars at the moment. And it does make me think, how will modern electric cars' batteries degrade? Will it be a similar situation to the Nissan Leaf where it loses sort of 30% over the course of approximately 10 years? I'm hopeful that that won't be the case, actually. I rather think that new battery electric cars protect their batteries a lot more efficiently than this Nissan Leaf, because a lot of the new cars come with battery preconditioning systems that get the battery to the correct operating temperature. They also have big buffers. So for example, they'll have, let's say an 80 kilowatt hour battery capacity, but 10 kilowatt hours of that isn't used. So that means that you don't necessarily use the full capacity of the battery. You don't charge it up to 100% and then drain it down to 0%. It's always sort of between I don't know, 10 and 90% of usage, which is one of the methods that you can use to protect the battery. But give credit to the Leaf because it's lasted for ages. It's done 70,000 miles on the clock and it's only lost 30% of its capacity. This could easily go another 70,000 and maybe lose another 30% of its capacity. So to have a car that's done 140,000 miles um, and still be able to do 
what's that going to be, around 30 miles, which is, I guess, a daily commute. Is that acceptable? I think it might be, in some people's eyes. Okay, I'm getting a bit fed up of driving around now. It's, <laughs> it's lasting way too long. <laughs> Maybe I should have taken it around the motorway. I'm going to pull in now for a little pit stop at a local eatery. All right, I've got my McCaffeine in my hand. Giant lorry behind me. I'm going to give you a quick range update. I've driven 25 miles and I've got 32 miles of range remaining. Right, uh, I'm going to fast forward now to the good bit. So come back in a second when things get a bit more serious. So things are starting to get pretty juicy right now, shall we say. Um, I took it down to the point where it said 20 miles of range remaining and I got a low battery warning. Low battery charge is what she said, uh, which I ignored because we're out here, we're doing science. I took it down to 10 miles remaining and it was kicking off properly. It was telling me, look, find a charging point right now. And I was like, no, thank you. We're pushing on. Then it got to nine miles remaining, eight miles remaining, seven miles remaining, six miles remaining. And at that point, that's when it stopped giving me an estimate for how far it would go. I had traveled 56 miles and then it said, you have no more, no more chances, bro. It's on you. I'm not telling you how far you can go in this thing because basically anything can happen at this point. You know we're not stopping, right? Of course we're not stopping. We've now done 58 miles, which is more than the car said it would do. So I've now basically surpassed the original expectations of the Nissan Leaf. I feel like that's a small victory, but we're not stopping here. We're pushing on. 60 miles traveled. That is a nice round number. That's a proper milestone. I like that. I like that because like I said, I think the original Nissan Leaf with a full battery pack with 100% battery health would probably be able to do around 90 miles. Having lost about a third of its capacity, I would expect this to do 60 miles and it's done it. Yes. Let's, let's keep going. Okay, 65 miles and we're starting to lose power now, um, especially in eco mode. Yeah, the car is definitely not giving me as much acceleration as it did in the beginning. Not that I want to use it, but you can definitely feel like it's starting to like throttle back a little bit, trying to eke out as much range as possible. Like it senses that it's about to come screeching to a halt. Well, there's a quick, what happens? What happens when it runs out? Does it just stop? Does it, does it roll? What, I don't know. Do I want to find out? <laughs> no, six, okay, 65 and a half miles. I'm gonna, I'm pushing my luck. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna call it quits. I'm gonna pull in because yeah, I don't want to get stuck out here on the road. I'm pulling in, I'm pulling in. We've definitely made it. We're safe. We are safe. But it's still, it's still moving. It's still going, which is the annoying thing because we've still got range in the battery. Should I stop? Should I stop or should I keep going? I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. It's still moving though. No, I'm going to keep going. I'm turning around. I'm turning around. I'm doing this for you guys. I'm turning around because I think we all want to see how far this actually goes. I'm definitely going to regret this, but we need to know how far the car goes and importantly, what happens when it runs out. So let's do it. Go. Whoa, oh, it stopped. That's it. It's, it's gone into neutral. It stopped. 66 miles dead and the battery is completely exhausted. So we got we got our answer to two questions. Um, the first, the second question, which is what happens when an electric car, when the Leaf runs out of battery, it just goes into neutral and rolls. I guess that makes sense because what it wants you to do is to be able to roll it out of trouble, like push it to the side, side of the road or to push it to a charging point, for example. But the main question, which is how far can this Nissan Leaf go is 66 miles dead on a full charge with about a third of the battery health um, depleted, which I think is a bit of a win. Because remember the original number was 57 miles and we've gone 
nine miles further than the car anticipated. Wow. I'm so happy that I wasn't on the road when that happened. That is, <laughs> someone's looking out for me. All right, result. I think that's it. We've answered the question. I'm so glad that we could bring you this range test. Um, I know you've been waiting for it for a long time. Um, we've got our answer. The leaf can go 66 miles dead. Um, maybe a bit further if I was, you know, if I was to drive a bit more economical, but I, I wouldn't expect a lot more from that. Uh, cool. That my heart is actually pounding. So I just want to say thanks for watching. Um, I hope you stay tuned to the rest of this Project Leaf series because we've got a lot of really cool stuff planned for this. We're going to do some um, some mechanical stuff, some maintenance stuff to show you what electric cars cost in terms of um, running repairs. Uh, we're going to do modific big modifications. This thing is going to look insane. Again, thanks for watching. And uh, we will see you guys in the very, very near future for more of the same. Peace.